Hello everybody. In this video, I am going to discuss relativistic Doppler effect in binary stars. To understand uh, relativistic Doppler effect, please do check out my video on relativistic Doppler effect or Doppler effect in light. Right. What is a binary star? Binary star is a system of two stars orbiting each other about a common center of mass. This is a very general definition of a binary star system but we know that different configurations of uh, binary star systems are possible. Different types of binary star systems are there out of which uh, one particular system is of great interest in the context of Doppler effect and that is what is called as spectroscopic binaries. Now these spectroscopic binaries are normally not resolvable using even the best telescopes available so they are not like visual binary stars in spectroscopic binary star systems you have a configuration of something of this kind this could be one of the configurations not the only available configuration here we say that there is a center of mass about which two stars which are the members of this binary system star a and star b they are orbiting about this center of mass now in this particular case uh, we are seeing that uh, uh, these two stars are, are orbiting in two different elliptical orbits around this center of mass and this center of mass in such a binary star system is generally called as the Berry center. So about the Berry center different configura configurations are possible uh, for uh, a pair of stars in the binary star system but we are dealing with one particular uh, pair of uh, uh, stars having a particular configuration right right so how uh, Doppler effect helps us to understand a binary system better in the case of spectroscopic binaries it is always the case that the spectrum of the stars has to be analyzed to understand the motion of the uh, stars in the system and the configuration and their configuration as well so let us consider the spectrum of stars consider consider only the visible let us consider only the visible part of the spectrum we know that visible spot part of the spectra, spectrum will have a lot of uh, uh, wavelengths uh, in fact continuous bands of wavelength uh, has to be uh, uh, considered but for simplicity in a schematic uh, approach we are trying to just understand that uh, uh, individual lines represent bands so uh, starting from violet uh, indigo blue green yellow orange and red this forms the visible spectrum uh, that one can observe from any such uh, uh, stars now each member of this binary system uh, will be able to emit uh, such a spectrum will be able to display such a spectrum uh, in which if uh, with respect to an unshifted spectrum uh, one can understand uh, whether the star is with respect to an earth based observer whether it is going away from us or uh, uh, coming towards us uh, that will decide whether the unshifted spectrum with respect to the unshifted spectrum whether our observed spectrum of a particular star is blue shifted or red shifted right let us try to understand this in a bit uh, more detail now going from violet to red one understands that the frequency is going down or the wavelength increases so from v to r in the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum the frequency is going down and the wavelength is increasing lambda is increasing so violet has the maximum frequency red has the minimum frequency among these uh, wavelengths and uh, violet has therefore the minimum wavelength and red has the maximum wavelength now suppose if star a is let us say moving away from us we know that from the doppler effect uh, uh, in relativity we know that for a source of light going away from us its frequency has to reduce if its frequency has to reduce then the entire spectrum with respect to the unshifted spectrum uh, the spectrum of such a star will be found to redshift that means moving towards 
lower frequencies so we have to understand that red shifting means down shifting that is going to lower end of the frequency spectrum so for a star a for example if it is going away from us its spectrum will be red shifted with respect to the unshifted spectrum on the other hand if star b is approaching towards us its spectrum will be blue shifted because blue shifting is towards the violet end of the spectrum that means up shifting or going towards the larger frequency values that's why it's called as up shifting so one can clearly remember that red shifting refers to down shifting in frequencies red shift means down shifting down shifting of frequencies and uh, blue shift means that refers to up shift in frequencies or the, the spectrum will be moving towards the uh, higher frequency side so left side is higher frequency side and right side towards the red end is a lower frequency side and this is the convention in which it has to be understood now one may question us one may one may have this question um, why it is called blue shifted because here i understand that uh, the visible part of the spectrum ends with red so if you move towards red is the reference so we say it is red shifted on the other hand the left hand is violet typically and then there is indigo and then there is blue so one should call it actually as violet shifted rather than blue shifted but why do we generally call it as blue shifted that is because uh, our eyes are better tuned to see uh, blue better than violet that is evolution has uh, gifted us a vision where blue uh, is easily uh, seen by our eyes compared to violet so our eyes like to see more blue rather than violet so that is a convention why we call that as blue shifting thus uh, uh, by studying the spectrum of stars uh, in such binary systems one can understand the configuration of uh, the members of that binary system and the relativistic Doppler effect comes in handy for studying such binary systems. Thank you.